How's your bottle? Oh, he smashed it in! It's Berbatov! It's brilliant! Hello and welcome to the United Devils podcast. My name is Arjun and over this series of podcasts we will be discussing everything Manchester United and the Premier League in general. In this podcast we will be discussing the first two pre-season games and as our main topic whether the current United crop have been successes or failures so far. With me today are Arion, Joe and Suraj. Uh, welcome guys. So let's discuss Perth Glory. It was a comfortable 2-0 win and honestly could have been a lot more. Joe, do you think it's unfair to criticise United's lack of clinical finishing so early in pre-season? Maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I read a, a match report for this one and I, I actually mentioned, I made point of it in there that it was quite disappointing actually to see us get to a certain part of the pitch, maybe the final third, and not actually have the ability to play through a Perth Glory team that actually showed no um, attacking intent whatsoever and actually put everyone behind the ball. But... Um, yeah, maybe it is a little bit unfair because obviously it's first game and, you know, we're, we're obviously trying to play a different way this season under Solskjaer and there's new ideas. But, you know, it is something that we need to address, I think, because we do seem to have a lot of, of incisive players in that final third. And I think it's going to become an issue if we don't address it in this transfer window. So, although it's the first game and you might say, oh, you know, it's, that's not what's important. What was important is getting some fitness in the legs. I think you are looking for signs of improvement in that area. And I think unless we make some changes to the squad, i.e. some signings, then um, I think we might we may struggle if we come up against sides like that in the Premier League. Thank you. Um, Suraj, I will ask you this about uh, the two new signings, Daniel James and Aaron Wambasaka. Although they only played 45 minutes in that game, do you think this is a good start for them? And uh, do you think they'll be first-team starters come the first game against Chelsea? Uh, yeah, definitely. Aaron Van Bissaka, for sure. I mean, I, I was particularly impressed by him. and I really liked the way he approached the game. In the sense, uh, he didn't really try to do any elaborate skills or tricks. He just, he just did his job and he moved on with it. And I thought that was really good. And against Pearl Glory, he was almost impossible to get, uh, get past. About Daniel James, I think he's going to be a huge asset for us in terms of counter-attacking play because that guy is one of the fastest players I've ever seen. And against Perth Glory also, he didn't look like he was going to get into any attacking opportunities, but he was doing very well to create the game around opposition box. And one thing I thought that needs improving is his uh, communication with the fullback because a lot of times in the game you saw that he... Looks in one direction, but the fullback's already in the other direction. So I think a little improvement there should help. Thank you. We'll go on to the Leeds game, where uh, United did pretty much ease into a 4-0 win. It was mostly United attacking throughout the game. Joe, about that game, in the first half, goals from Greenwood and Rashford, and Greenwood looking very, very lively, and Solskjaer admitting himself that he might start against Chelsea. Is that something you'd like to see, or would you rather see... Ed Woodward pulling out his checkbook once again and getting a right winger. Well, obviously, you know, if, if there's a right winger out there that's going to improve our squad, I would never, obviously, object to that. But, you know, if, if we look at the current squad as it is right now, I think if, if, if Ollie believes that Greenwood is good enough to start in that first game against Chelsea, like he suggested, then, you know, who are we to argue? And I, and I think... You know, as Man United fans, we have to be encouraged by the fact that we're given the, the potential of giving this young person a, a chance because that's, as a club, what we're all about. You know, if you look at the options we've had up there, you know, it's not as if Martial is, is playing out of his skin to keep Greenwood out of the team. Certainly, 
Sanchez's performances haven't suggested that he's going to be the man to sort of show up Greenwood and, and show that he's better than Greenwood. So I think if Greenwood continues to show the potential that he's got, and we go into the, the first game of the season with the, uh, the squad as it is in, in the attacking department, then I would have no objections to see Greenwood start, especially if he continues to play this way on the tour and gets two or three more goals, say, under his belt against better opposition. And if I could uh, add to that, uh, what, I, what I like about how Ali plays that front three is that they're really fluid and interchangeable, like like what happens for the first goal against Leeds, where I wasn't, I didn't even know that was Green with who scored that first goal because I was expecting him to be out wide, but he just popped up in the middle. So I think even though when he's, he was given his debut in the Premier League and stuff on the right, but now seeing that he's outright on paper and for but a lot of the game, but there is the opportunities where he will switch with the likes of Rashford and Martial and be all over the pitch and end up in the number nine spot and get his chances. So I wouldn't object at all if he was um, if he was to come out in the first team for that Chelsea game. Thanks. Uh, so let's get started on the main topic. We are going to take a look at the players still at the club and whether they have been successes or failures. We will not be including Daniel James or Aaron Wambasaka as they have not been at the club long enough to be judged, nor will we be looking at youngsters such as Gomez, Chong, Greenwood or Garner as uh, they haven't been given enough time to determine this. So we'll start with David De Gea. Uh, I think it's fair to say that he's been a success. He might have had a few issues at the beginning, but now he is probably the best goalkeeper of the world. Uh, we'll go on to Sergio Romero, who's been the backup goalkeeper pretty much since he was brought into the club um, on a free transfer from Sampdoria by Louis van Gaal. He featured mostly in cup games and the Europa League, and has had a few games in the Premier League, but not too many. Aaron, would you say that Sergio Romero has been a success of the club? Yeah, I think he certainly has. And I think it was uh, his beginnings were quite similar to uh, De Gea just after coming to England, because I remember it was, I think it was his first season when the De Gea rumours about him go leaving were very strong and he was kept, he was, he didn't play in the first few games of the season in the league and Romero had a few blunders and stuff. And I was really off on him. I, I, I wasn't sure if he would be able to handle the English football, but he's re- he's certainly adapted and grown into it. And as a backup keeper, it's difficult because you have a very limited time on the pitch to, to, to say whether you're a success or a flop. But in his case, I think he certainly has been a success and a big part of us winning the trophies in uh, Mourinho's first season because he was playing in the cup competitions. And I saw the stat where he has 27 clean sheets in 42 games for United, which is uh, pretty impressive. So, like him, I think he's, he's commanding. And if De Gea was to leave at any point, which I don't think he is now with all the contract speculation, but if he was, I wouldn't be worried about the, the near future of who is in our goal because of Romero. I think he's certainly been a success. Right, now moving on to United's third-choice goalkeeper, Lee Grant. He was one of the three signings of last summer. Uh, bought from Stoke for three and a half million pounds and featured against Derby County in the Carabao Cup last year. Joe, he's not played too much, but uh, would you say he's been a success of the club? Yeah, look, I think, you know, Lee Grant is what he is. He's a third, well, he'll fluctuate between second choice and third choice goalkeeper, depending on, obviously, the fitness of Romero and, obviously, Dave. and, And I think, you know, he's fully aware of why he's being brought to the club. And I think when you look at a third-choice goalkeeper at a football club, you need to sort of think about not necessarily his performances on the pitch, because as you say, he's not he's not had a lot of game time and he's not going to get a lot of game time. But I think people like him come across to me as being good squad players. So, I mean, that's really important. I think he's got a good sense of humour. He seems to have a, he seems to be a very much well-liked character amongst the group. So, I think it's obviously been a bit of a dream for him to play for United. And obviously, he would have loved to have been our number one, but that's, that's never going to be the case. I think even if we sold the likes of De Gea and Romero, you know, we wouldn't go into a season with Lee Grant as number one. But I think, you know, the guy's got experience. You know, he's played in the Premier League uh, of Stoke City. Um, but, yeah, I think you can't underestimate sometimes the value of these these players off the pitch. And I think, you know, he's obviously a help in training. You know, he'll, he'll be 
giving advice to Romero and Dave. And yeah, I, I, you know, I, it's hard to say because he's he's not going to play, and it's hard to comment on him as a as a goalkeeper. But I think he's he's handy to have around the keepers that we do have. All right, brilliant. So you have three successes in a row. Given the fact that we're now going to go on to, to vendors, I think this is going to very quickly change. So we'll start with Matteo Damian, who was bought for a fee of twelve and a half million pounds. He did very well when he started, but then it seemed to slowly tail away. Um, Suraj, would you say that he's been a success despite not playing too much over the last couple of years? No, he's definitely not a success, but. Uh, the thing with Damian is I don't detest him as much as I, you know, I feel about some of the other players because it it, it just seems like whenever he's picked, he he doesn't really complain or fuss about not getting a lot of game time. He just gets on with the game. He just gives it his all, even though his all isn't good enough. But whatever he gives, I think it is respectable. But he's definitely not a success. He's one of those. Schneiderlin type of signings that look great at other clubs, but when he really comes to your club, he doesn't quite cut it. And surprisingly, a lot of Italian clubs are willing to take him back. So if we sell him for a decent price, I think that's good enough. Yeah, in Damian's defense, I would have to say that um, he is a very good defender, and you can't—I don't think you can take that away from him. He's, he's whenever he has played, he has been sound defensive. I just think it's not a good match for the Premier League style. Where I think um, I have to agree that in his time at United, he has underachieved. So I couldn't disagree with what Sir I said. We'll move on to uh, a younger right back, um, someone who's probably going to be rotating in with Aaron Wambasaka this year is Diogo Dallo. He was um, was bought from Porto for a fee of around £20 million. Uh, Aaron, I'll ask you, do you think it's too early to determine whether he's a success or failure? Oh yeah, for sure. It's, it's He's only had a, a season and not even a full one because he was struggling with injuries I just after we signed him. But Dallo, I feel like he's a complete opposite of what Damian is. He is very sound going forward and you can see the promise whenever he's on the ball. He likes to take players on. He has a good delivery. But I find him very suspect as, as a defender. It's, it seems to me like he is better fitted to be a more of an attacking player, but he's still young, so I don't doubt that he will improve. And he, between him and Juan Bissaka, we will have a very good competition for a right back over the next, what you could say, a decade if they both stay at the club. So I think, um, and I was listening to Ali talk after the Leeds game, I think it was, that uh, Dalo gives him that versatility that if you need uh, to put somebody on when you're chasing the game, you can throw him on and he could almost play like a, as a winger while filling in at right back. So, yeah, I think it's it's way too early to judge him off one season, but I think they, I, their potential is there. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I was a little bit frustrated last season because, obviously, we persistently played Ashley Young um, as a right back, and as you'll probably gather from, from myself, I'm not a massive Ashley Young fan, so I was frustrated at that. I, I felt that Dano had a bit of... I had a lack of opportunity last season. I think there was plenty more opportunities to give him games than what we actually did. So I think, it, like Arian said, it's too it's too early to tell. But I feel like we should be in more of a position to make a judgment because by now we should have played more games. If you know what I'm saying. So, Raj, is that fair? Actually, I I had an interesting take over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Dalo didn't get a lot of chance at right back, like Joe just said. And he got a few run-ins in right wing. Now, Van Bissaka is a former right winger who played at right back. And Dallo is a right back who has also played right wing. So, both our right backs know how uh, right winger plays and right back plays. So, uh, if it, some games we could experiment with Dallo at right wing and uh, Van Bissaka on, at right back. So, we we'll probably... And uh, they'll probably understand each other much better. All right, brilliant. Uh, thank you. Well, we, Joe, you did say you're not a big fan of Ashley Young at right back. We're going to talk about him now. He he was brought in uh, by Sir Alex in 2011. Ashley Young was brought in to be a left winger, but since he's been signed, he's played in left back, right back, 
left mid, right mid, centre forward and centre back. Um, he's a certainly a versatile player and had didn't have the best of seasons last year. But would you still say he's been a success at the club? Well, he's one of you might be able to tell me for sure, Arjun, but I think there's not many players left there now that have actually got a Premier League medal is there at United, so he's definitely yeah. one of them. So I think, you know, he's won a Premier League with United, albeit, uh, I can't remember how much he'd have been involved during that 2012-13 season under uh, Sir Alex. But, um, you know, the, th- the thing with Ashley Young is, is I think we need, again, to appreciate the fact that I think he's a great player to have around the squad. You know, you, you, you listen to a, a, a lot of the guys in interview who were involved at United and they all say that, you know, he's fantastic around the dressing room. You know, he, he's one of those players, he doesn't complain if he's not playing, he just gets on with it. I think he's a dressing room DJ, which apparently is really important these days in the modern day. <laughs> so I think... There's a lot, you know, I don't want to sort of batter him, but I just think as a player, I was dubious when he first signed all those years ago. Although he was an impressive performance performer for Aston Villa, I did worry about his consistency uh, when he first came to United. And if you remember when he did first go, he was far from a regular under Alex Ferguson. I think, you know, he had his um, reservations too. But I think we have to respect him also as a player because he's been willing to adapt his game in the, in order to be able to stay a United player, so he's probably had to become a left back and a right back in order to find his place, like within our squad. I think you can say what you want about Ashley Young, but I never really get the impression when I watch him play that he doesn't give 100% for the team. I do think he he gives 100%. I just think he has limitations, and at the end of the day, it's not really his fault that he's selected. I do feel that he doesn't deserve the abuse that he gets I, I just think it's it, he's just never really been a, a player that's quite been good enough for United if you know what I'm saying but mm. I have total respect for him and, and the job that he's done for us over the season because he, you know he's filled gaps when we've been you know struggling for players in in the right back and left back area you know he's been fantastic you know filling in there but it's just unfortunate that I don't think he's he's good enough I'd have to say he's a failure. I mean, I, I feel, I even feel harsh even saying that about him because he's a guy now who almost, you know, sort of, he's been at the club such a long time. You, you know, he, he, you feel bad for saying it, but I feel if you if you're being like bluntly honest about it, I just don't think he's he's ever been good enough to wear the wear United shirt. All right, thank you. Uh, We'll move on to the one true left-back at the club at the moment, which is Luke Shaw. He was uh, bought by Louis van Gaal in his first season uh, for a world record transfer fee of £30 million for a teenager, which surpassed Wayne Rooney's transfer fee. He was hampered by injury in his first season, didn't play after the PSV game in his second season, and rarely featured under Mourinho either. So he's barely played until this season, really, in which he was named Man United's Player of the Year. But at the same time, to do you think that that's enough, Suraj, to call him a success at the club? Or do you think he's not quite there yet? Uh- when he first came into the club, I think he was one of our one of our best players. You know, his game against Chelsea in his first season was absolutely amazing. And then for such a young player to have such a uh, such a long term injury and coming back from that is actually quite commendable. Uh, so that's all I'm gonna say about him about his first few seasons. Now about the last season where he actually played for us regularly, I think Luke Shaw is good enough for us. But I think that's just about it. He wasn't spectacular. He, he was just good enough. And I know for a fact that when we do sign a centre-back and actually strengthen the most glaring error in our defence, uh, left-back will ultimately become the weak link in our defence. And in the, that's why in the first podcast I mentioned that we should be in for Tierney so that Luke doesn't feel like he's in a comfortable spot where he's going to play week in, week out regardless. Uh, I couldn't fault his defensive game too much, but mm-hmm. again, he's he's good enough, but that's just about it. I think Luke Shaw is one 
close to being a success at United, but he just needs to work a little harder. We'll know for sure if he's a success in the next few seasons. I, I just think for Luke Shaw, the key is is obviously it's his you know his mentality and his his uh, commitment to the cause. I think he's got all the talent there. I do think there's again like a little tobacco watch for Ashley. I think. He could be a little bit better going forward. I think, you know, United will be looking for more of an output in terms of assists this season. Um, sometimes I feel like he gets in the attacking third and just delivers balls into the box with quite aimlessly. Uh, but I think, you know, it, I think the, the, the whole time through his career at United, I just feel it's been about the penny dropping for him. I think he had to realise how good he is and you know, he needed to realise what he needed to do to, in order to unlock his potential. I think there's there's always been the ability there, but I've I've just wondered about how, you know, much he wanted it, if you know what I mean. I think there was times when, after the injury, you know, there was question marks about his fitness and about his weight, and, you know, he sort of answered that by coming back to pre-season quite early this season and also last season. Um, but there were times when you think, you know, are you going to take the criticism on board and are you going to make the improvements that you need to? But uh, I think that he has now. I think the, the penny has finally dropped and I feel like last season, the award that he got at the, the Player of the Year Awards, I think, you know, might be vindication for the, the hard work he's put in and I hope that he can kick on this season and, and you know, and... Um, um, play well for us and, and like I say get more of a system be a more of attacking threat for us because like I said before that's what we require from our fullbacks at United Thank you so uh, fair to say that he's been sort of a, just about a success but would really need to you know work on himself this season to see if he can be that player we all hope he can be so now we'll go on to Chris Smalling Bought by Sir Alex Ferguson in January 2010. He's won two Premier League titles with Manchester United, amongst other trophies, and was really the player to play alongside Lindelof for the majority of Solskjaer's reign last season. He's been very inconsistent. He had a couple, he had a good season with Louis van Gaal, maybe. You'd say maybe a season and a half. But Joe, would he be called a success or just one of those players that like Ashley Young that was just never good enough for United? Um, Chris Morley did a tough one. I think Chris Morley, a little bit like Phil Jones and like some of the other centre backs at our club, you know, they've been unfortunate not to be able to play, you know, alongside top class centre backs for long enough in order to aid their development, if you know what I mean. I think, you know, We've been so fortunate at United over the years to have defenders like Vidic and Ferdinand, you know, but, but Chris Mullins never really, like you say, been able to strike up a partnership with another top-class centre-back. His development's probably not gone as far as United would have liked it to. I think Smalling's very good when he's like up against strikers that are sort of get close to him, you know, so if he's playing against big men up front, like target men, he, he's very good, with, he likes to be able to feel players up against him. I, I, I just struggle, I, you know, I worry whenever he plays against teams where I have strikers that are quite diminutive, have a lot of pace and a, a fluid movement, because I don't feel like he has the game intelligence to deal with that. Um, but, like you say, I mean, it's always going to be difficult for him to show what a good defender he is when most of his career he's been paired with Phil Jones, who has also struggled as well. So I think, yeah, he's he's not, it's, it's just not worked out for me. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, so we'll move on to Eric Bailly, Jose Mourinho's first signing as United boss for £30 million from Villarreal. Although he has the potential to be a very, very good defender, Aaron, has has he been good enough to be deemed a success? Um, I think he hasn't. He hasn't had enough time to be like he would be deemed as a flop just purely based on how many games he has been able to play because of the injury problems. It just seems like he can't play a full game without being down and picking up a knock or a niggle. 
you can certainly, and he's still very young. He's, well, I think he's 24 right now. So I think the, the potential is there in him, and he's a very good ball playing center half as well. It's something that before him and uh, Lindelof, he might haven't had for a few years. So uh, I think that uh, if if we don't sign another center back, him and Lindelof would be my preferred partnership for the for the season if he could stay healthy. So I'm a, I'm a fan of his, and I like the way he has a knack for a good tackle, and he reads the game quite well, and he's composed most of the time. Although he, he can be a bit of a walking red card at times, but I really like him as a footballer and his potential for the future at United. But just purely based on his fitness and not being able to put together a full season of games yet, he has been a flop so far. He hasn't lived up to what we kind of hoped for, even though he is young. All right. OK, moving on, we go to Marcus Rojo. Uh, another Louis van Gaal signing, uh, signed for £16 million from Sporting Lisbon. Um, he had a really good first season with Van Gaal, uh, and this, even the second season he did all right, despite playing most of the season as a left-back in place for the injured Luke Shaw. Then after Mourinho, as we said previously, he had a good spell in the 16-17 season, but then just barely played the last two years. Suraj, so, would you agree that he is a flop at United? He's a complete flop. Uh, the transfer of a defender in that window was a very, very important one and we completely messed it up uh, because it, it was crucial in terms of getting it right because Vidic, Ferdinand and Evra had just left the club. So three leader figures had just left the club and we needed a proper experienced centre-back who could uh, command the box and we got in Marcus Rojo uh, and then he turned out to be injury prone and then we shifted daily blend and then there was a lot of lot of uh, it was just a big mess on the whole and I just want him out of the club as soon as possible I just I just want to say how how he has outlasted players like daily blend or he was or he was bought in the same window as somebody like Raphael was sold I just don't understand so he's one of maybe two or three players that are just quite happy you know if i'm being cynical quite yeah. happy to sit on a bench and take a wedge and you know we'll see where we are come next season it just frustrates me because i don't understand why these players don't want to play football you know i don't understand why people like marcus Rojo wouldn't want to move on now and and try and get some game time you know whether it be in england whether it be back in Europe or even back in Argentina. So it just, I don't want those type of players at my club. Thank you. We'll move on to Victor Lindelof, who was signed by Jose Mourinho in 2017 for a fee of around £30 million from Benfica. He made his first appearance for United against Real Madrid in the Super Cup and made quite a few errors in that game, making his first Premier League debut two months later as a result against Liverpool. After the first season, he seemed to settle down and then was a consistently excellent player for the rest of the season. Um, Aaron, do you think he's been a success, or do you think it's too soon to say again? Um, what I can say, what I can say for about Lindelof is that when it comes to signing for a club of United's profile, and then you're beginning at the club, like you literally can't get off to a worse start than he has. I was, I was, I was have to admit, I was completely writing him off at first. He was just, he seemed like he was making mistake after mistake. He was costing us goals. He just, he just didn't look comfortable starting for a club like United but credit to him I think maybe something like that like a baptism of fire kind of thing shaped him a little bit as a player and kind of fixed his uh, or not fixed but improved his character and like gave him the ability to become a big center back for a club like United and I think um, he's been going onwards and upwards since then and last season I thought personally he was our player of the season last season so I think it's he hasn't been at the club long enough to classify whether he is a success or a flop just yet. But I would say that he would be closer to a success than a flop, considering that in the eyes of the most fans, I think it will be uh, him and Harry Maguire that would be our starting partnership, and nobody, nobody else. So I think he has earned the respect of most United fans. 
over the last couple of years after that terrible first year. So I think he's on his way to being a success. I think that, just to add to that as well, I think the next United centre half signing is not just a massive signing for the club, it's a massive signing for Lindelof as well. Because I think if we can get a real good quality centre half in, in the shape of someone like Maguire or Kula Valley or something like that, then I think that that will only improve the likes of Lindelof and, and Bay, who have no doubt got potential, but are now trying out for a quality centre half partner, not Chris Smalling or Phil Jones. Well, well, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to Phil Jones now. Um, another Sir Alex Ferguson signing, uh, signed from Blackburn. He's had some good games, but mostly he's had some bad games, I think it's fair to say. Um, Joe, do you think he's another player that just was never never kicked on, too injury prone, not good enough for United? Yeah, can, can we start this by just being positive about his performance today? Because probably today he probably had his best game in a Man United shirt, to be fair to him. <laughs> We should take this opportunity to say something nice about him. I mean, today yeah. he was great to me, but I don't know what I don't know what got into him today. You know, aside from his goal, he looked. He, you know, he was just on the ball for United. He, he was coming out of defence with the ball. He was making runs off the ball, breaking into the opposition penalty area at one stage. I think it like literally looked like a gazelle running from one end of the pitch to the other. <laughs> I don't really know what that was all about, but yeah, I just think you know a little bit like Chris Morden, you know. It, Never really, had, I mean, everyone thought when we bought Smalling and Jones that they would be the centre-back partnership for United for the next decade and maybe even for England as well, which obviously in an ideal world would have been great. But, yeah, it just it's just never worked out. Like you say, he's had, he's, his development's been stunted by injury and that's fair enough. But I do think around, around the injuries, you know, when he has had periods of fitness, he's just doesn't fill me with confidence and I don't think he fills himself with confidence. I think he looks clumsy on the ball. I, I, I think his technique is not great. You know, I think he's just never been good enough to be a, a United defender because I think the weight of the shirt has just weighed a bit too heavy for him over the years. For me, I think um, Jones is a kind of a player like he would be more appreciated and maybe decent at a club, at like a mid-table club, but he is just not a Man United defender or player whatsoever in my books. I think he's been a flop. Thank you. Um, so now we move on to our final defender, uh, Axel Tuanzebi, who is a Manchester United Academy graduate. Uh, he's been there since he was eight years old and uh, made his debut against um, Wigan Athletic in a 4-0 FA Cup victory in January 2017 and played quite a lot in that season when United were low on defenders and when they were focusing more on the Europa League. Most notably, he uh, he had uh, Alexis Sanchez in his back pocket against Arsenal despite United losing 2-0. Um, he then this played... Yeah, he, uh, he played a few times again uh, in the 2017-18 season, but then joined Aston Villa on loan in January. He stayed at the club then for the following season in which he achieved promotion to the Premier League. He's now in our uh, pre-season tour squad. Um, do you think he's not played enough to be a to be deemed a success, Joe? <coughs> He's not been able to do it as a Man United player, so it's unfair to say that he's been a failure. I think, you know, it, we've sent him out on loan, and whenever he's gone out on loan or whenever he's asked to play for us, he's never really done anything wrong. I can't pick a time when I've looked at him and thought, wow, he's had an absolute shocker, you know what I mean? So mm. I think for himself and his own personal development, he's been a success. Whether he'll be a success at United is obviously too early to tell because we haven't seen enough games. But I think all the signs are there to say that he will be, especially when you compare him to what we already have. No, well, yeah, you, you could argue that, but I think you know, to be fair to him, we, we should look at what he did last season, and he, he was a massive part of everything good that Aston Villa did. I mean. In the Championship is a tough league. It's a league where you play against proper men, you know it, but. I think he's always had those attributes where his his body's sort of been older than his actual age. I remember, I remember one of his first games under Jose Mourinho, I should say, it was a pre-season game against Wigan, 
And out of all of the players that played that day, you know, he was mentioned for special praise by Mourinho. And Mourinho said, you know, you could see after 30 seconds what potential this lad had. And I think that only, you know, his season that he had with Villa last season only backed that up further. Like I say, you know, he was fantastic there. And I would actually like to see him stay this season. I, th- I think there's potential for him to get some game time in our Europa League campaign. And then obviously if he does impress, there might be no reason why he can't play more games in the Premier League as well, obviously, especially if he continues to have his injury problems, you know, if we don't sign another centre-back. So I can see plenty of scenarios where Tillian Davey could get plenty of game time for United next season, and I, I kind of hope he does. Uh, brilliant. So we'll move on to the midfield. So we start with um, Nemanja Matic, who joined Manchester United from Chelsea in 2017 for a fee of £40 million. And to be honest, I was quite surprised that Matic actually was allowed to join, uh, despite being so pivotal in Chelsea's title-winning season the season before. They knew what they were doing with that and they were <laughs> setting us up. It, like like you said, he, he had one very, very good season, and then this season he was just awful. Um, I have to say, quite awful. Um, Suraj, would you say having one good season and one bad season could determine you as a failure? Uh, so, why I think Chelsea sold Matic to us was because uh, he did a very good job, but uh, Kante just overshadowed the entire midfield that season, so I think uh, Matic's, Matic's work went a little under the radar and Jose knew exactly the type of player he wanted and the room for Bakayoko and Fabinho who were available that he specifically went for Matic and he was amazing that season. I think he ran our entire field. But then again, this is a Matic of two halves. One was absolutely amazing this season. The second one, he, he does nothing. Usually he's the player who sets the tempo for everyone on the pitch, but off late it's, it seems like everyone sets the tempo for him. He just can't seem to control the ball properly and then play to the nearest person. He always seems like he's under pressure. Uh, but I'm going to discredit that, just give him the benefit of the doubt and say, and call him a success because Jose signed him to perform one uh, perform one function in the midfield and he did that very well. So I'm going to uh, call him a success and we should move him on before <laughs> have to be a proper <laughs> horrible footballer. Yeah, what I'd like to add really quickly about Matic is uh, that in the, the kind of essential defensive midfielder position that we need uh, a player of that uh, at United is um, just in the, a look at what McTominay did for Rashford's goal today against Leeds. Where he won the ball, when he won the ball back and ran almost the length of the pitch before playing a pass in the counter attack, and um, the goal came from. And do do you does anybody here see Matic ever being able to do something like that? I don't, I don't think so. Mm. Not unless somebody picks him up and carries him. Don't like now, to be honest. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, so now we'll move on to Scott McTominay. Um, McTominay made his debut under Jose Mourinho um, as a substitute against Arsenal in that 2-0 defeat that Tuan Zabi also played in. Um, and since then, he's sort of been integrated in gradually, uh, having a more and more uh, regular role in the team. And under Solskjaer has been outstanding since he's come in. Uh, would you say that, again, Arion, is it too early to determine whether he's been a success? Or do you think it's fair to say that he has so far uh, lived up to what he can do? I think over the past few months, or maybe the whole season, he has uh, slowly built into a, a player, a Man United player. Because when he was first getting given his debut and integrated into the first team by Mourinho, I think everybody was like, "Wow, what? Why him?" There was a lot, probably a lot of other candidates in the academy that were, I don't know, maybe more deserving and more United profile. Uh, to deserve a first team debut, but it was McTominay, and I think he's just gradually grew into the role of being a United player and started to silence all of his all of his critics, me included. And uh, over the last year, probably yeah, like a whole season, he has shown that he's uh, becoming a big game player, reliable, good on the ball, dynamic, uh, big, 
wins tackles. So he has the physical attributes of Matic, but he's just more dynamic, more mobile, and more fitting for being a holding midfielder for United. So I think he is a He's been a success so far as an academy graduate, and I think he's, there's a lot more for him to achieve. Fair enough. Um, so we'll go on. Yeah, it's another uh, academy graduate, Jesse Lingard, who causes, let's say, a lot more controversy than Scott McTominay does. Uh, he only started becoming a regular first-team starter in 2015-16 season. He's then gone on to become an important player under Mourinho, and it seems like another important player under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We've talked about him, and Suraj, I know you agree that um, he should be sold. Um, Joe, what's your, what's your opinion on Jesse Lingard? He's a, he's a player that immensely, immensely winds me up, to be honest. I, 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 I'm, you know, I look at him and, you know, he's a little bit like Theo Walcott, isn't he? I keep wanting to keep saying he's a young player, he's a young player, but I think he's 26 now, isn't he? And He's almost 27, I believe. Oh, 27, well, there we go there. And I just think, <laughs> yeah, it's becoming, it really sort of frustrates me. He's like, you know, I mean, as a footballer, there's no doubt he, he has ability. We've seen that for both United and England. And, you know, I like the way in which he looks to pick, I like the, the, the areas in which he loves to receive the ball. I think that's quite good. I, he's got quite good p- positional sense. He loves to work between the lines and then he can work on the half turn. And when he gets in that sort of mood, he is really threatening. But the, it's just he doesn't seem to grasp what being a professional footballer is all about. I mean, he goes on about YouTube ain't ready for him yet. Well, he ain't ready for Man United. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, he has the ability, but I think he has more focus on becoming a bit of a social media star and that at the moment at United in in the current situation we're in is not what we need. You know, we cannot have these type of players at the moment because we're not in a situation where we can carry them and, and we can say, oh, well, you know, you can have a period out of the team because you're carrying off like this. You know, we need people to be committed to the cause. We need people to take the situation serious and especially when you see what he gets up to over the summer because you know fans are hurting from last season and not just last season probably the last three or four seasons fans are really hurting about the situation and yet he's there just having a joke about it life and I just don't think it's what fans need to be seeing and I never see any videos of Jesse really you know sprinting doing sprint tests or running on a treadmill, I never see those type of videos from him, and I think, I mean, rumours within the club are saying that, you know, he's, he's been disciplined quite hard for, obviously, his antics over the summer, so if he's going to become a success at United, he, start, he needs to start realising what it's going to take to be a professional footballer and not a social media icon, because that will only take him so far. There's been signs when you think that, actually, he's got this, you know, he'll kick on for every good period of form that he's had. We seem to have a period of bad form that sort of lasts double the amount of time where he goes really quiet and he he doesn't put enough good performances together for me to deem him as a success and he certainly doesn't have the attitude that he needs to, for him to be a success either, I don't think. But he needs to up his game because it would be such a shame to see his career stagnate and, you know, I think... He, as a United fan, you want these players to come through and you want these players to do well, but sooner or later the penny needs to drop and and um, we'll have to see whether that over, happens over next season. Maybe if there's any man that can get him on the, on the straight and narrow, that'll be Solskjaer. We'll have to see, but uh, hopefully. Uh, thank you. Move on now to Andreas Pereira, who was bought by Manchester United from PSV Eidhoven even and has been in and out of the team this season uh, and as we've talked about before he seems to always impress at pre-season but then would always go out on loan or just become a usual under 23s player he's never like Jesse Lingard he never really had a good run of games but maybe that was because uh, and Herrera was coming back from injury or something like that, or his injury issues himself. Um, do you think he's one of those players, Suraj, that is 
indeterminable as to whether he's a success or a failure. I think as it stands, he's a he's a failure, but it doesn't necessarily have to end that way. He could he could end up becoming a successful player at Manchester United. But if I'm not wrong, he he uh, graduated with the likes of uh, Adnan Yanazar, and they both had their dips in form at the same time. And then there was reports of them trying to score directly from corners in uh, in the youth games, which I thought was quite disrespectful. But the difference between the two is that Yanisai left the club and he went to the team that was willing to take him. But uh, Pereira went out on loan and he actually fought for his place. And I think I think it's pretty cool that he's actually found his way back into the club. And after after the lead game. Solskjaer said that we're going to see a lot of McTominay and Pereira. So I think this is the season that Pereira has to really turn it around. Especially with uh, Herrera for PSG, there's nobody to uh, actually block his place. Unless we sign a box-to-box midfielder. But as it stands, Pereira can really up his game this season and prove everyone wrong. Alright, thank you. Uh, We're going to... Move on to Paul Pogba. He rejoined Manchester United uh, for a fee of around £90 million pounds in the 2016 summer transfer window and has had an interesting career at United, you would say. He's had, again, very, very good spell. He scored 16 goals uh, for the club this season, was our top goal scorer in the Premier League, and altogether. Um, but then he always just seems like he's never really unlocked his full potential. He's never been as free as he was uh, for Juventus. Would you say that he's a success or would you say that he's just never really reached the potential that he could have done? I would say that overall so far, looking at his, as people love to look at just the statistics and everything, I'd say he would have been a, more of a success than a flop, despite United not maybe achieving as much as we would have hoped for by bringing a player like him in. But I think uh, if he stays, I think I feel like he is on his way to finding that balance that I feel like United have struggled to find for him. He was either played either too deep or he was played too far forward and the holes in his game were being exposed. But I feel like looking at the first two preseason games now, he is kind of picking up this role where he might not care as much about the numbers and what people will say about his stats at the end of the season. But... The effect that he has in a game, if you actually watch United games, is is clear when he's on this game. He can pick out crazy passes, he can play simple passes, he can release the pressure, control the tempo. So I feel like if he stays and he plays in this number eight, but kind of a box-to-box role where he is just controlling the game, uh, I think he will be on his way to being a huge success at United. And I think he is the man that will have, play a large part in leading us back to being a successful club again if... I think he has been more success than the failure so far, and I think the better, the best is still yet to come. Hopefully, next season. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to. Uh, Joe, I'll give you the. <laughs> I'll give you the easy task of determining whether Alexis Sanchez is a success or a failure. Uh, uh, he just never, as we've just, as we said. The last two um, episodes, he's just never kicked on, never had a good run of form. He's never had a run of form. Um, he's got to be determined as a failure, hasn't he? Well, I think the more interesting question is probably who got the better deal out of that swap deal. I'm not yeah. Quite sure. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I saw Mkhitary, that's some pretty good games for Arsenal, so maybe Arsenal, to be fair, but uh, no, I just think he, he, he's not been anywhere near good enough, has he, for, for us, unfortunately. I don't know what's happened since he's come to us. It's as if somebody's just taken all that talent away. Has anybody ever, you've probably watched the film Space Jam, have you seen that film with the, with the basketball players and the... Oh, the Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah, so you've yeah. got that situation where <laughs> get the basketball players and they suck all the talent out of them, don't they? It's, it's feel as if somebody I feel as if somebody did that to Sanchez at some point. But no, I, I, it's, it's unfortunate. But the warning signs were there for United actually during his last six months at Arsenal. If you can take yourself back, I, I think his form over the last six months at Arsenal was quite poor. But I think people put that down to the fact that he he wanted to move. He was looking for a move and he was maybe sulking and he didn't want to be there and he's fallen out of the arse and 
or maybe the warning signs about his form were there then. But I think the club would like to obviously get tell him. But if they don't, you know, he, he's not the worst option to have in the squad. I mean, there's there's always a chance that if he can stay fit and put a run of games together, he, he could come good for United this season. But I think it's quite easy to say that obviously, yeah, he's he's been a failure, unfortunately. So, Roger, I'll ask you about Fred, one of the, the other three players that um, Jose signed last summer um, from Shakhtar Donetsk for, I believe, a fee of around £57 million. Uh, he's got to be determined as, uh, as one of those players that's been a failure for now but has a really good future ahead of him, surely. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a failure because... It's been one season, but I still can't put my finger on what his best position is. Would he be better off playing as a number six or a number eight? I I I can't I can't determine that. And I think the only good game he's had was uh, against PSG away. Uh, he's just been disappointing, and I was hoping to see more of him in preseason. But obviously, he hasn't uh, turned up because of his because personal reasons or whatever. But I, I, I think he I think he's in Singapore right now. So uh I I would like to give him the benefit of the doubt by saying that yeah, okay, fine, it's your first season in the Premier League here, take another one to it. I mean don't take another one, but use that one to adjust to the Premier League and maybe in the next season he'll be good like Lindelof was. Uh but that remains to be seen. So as it stands, he's definitely a failure. Brilliant. Okay, so now we'll move on to Juan Mata, um, signed by David Moyes uh, for a fee of £37 million pounds from Chelsea, where he was probably one of Chelsea's best players for the last couple of seasons. He's not, his stats don't show, for me, he don't show how good he's been at United. He's had uh, a, po- a very positive impact and he's been one of the few players we've actually bought with some sort of quality of vision in their play. Um, he's just signed a new contract despite being linked with moves away to Barcelona, to Valencia. Um, Aaron, do you think he's been a success at United? Or do you think he should have had um, a higher tally of goals and assists to be determined as such? Uh, I, th- I think you could argue that he should have a higher tally of goals and assists, especially considering the player that we signed from Chelsea. He, what he was doing for Chelsea and off the right-hand side as well was quite uh, remarkable for a player of his size and physical attributes. But I would, I, I don't think you could call him a flop. Like he has been a, he has been a good servant to the club. I think, I think we have, uh, you, we haven't utilized him to his strengths to make him as successful as he could have been as a United player, but he does seem like one of those players that doesn't mind, that is a good squad player, a good player to have in the dressing room, somebody that doesn't moan about his game time, and I was actually happy to see him sign a new contract to stay on as probably in more of a coaching mentor role. So uh, I wouldn't say that he has been a failure, but I think he could have been more successful than he has been if he had been used right. Thank you. We'll go on to Anthony Martial. Uh, signed by Louis van Gaal, he hit the ground running straight away. Uh, he scored 17 goals in his debut season, uh, 11 in the Premier League, and was United's top goal scorer that season. He divides a lot of opinion as to whether he should start or whether he should be an impact player. But uh, Suraj, is he a success at United? I'm one of Martial's biggest biggest critics, but not because I don't rate him, but it's because I rate him too high. He he just set the bar so high in his first game and his first season in general that now anything less is unacceptable for me. And yeah, he. But what I want to see from him is more than just spurts of greatness. I want to see more consistency from him. Maybe two, three. 15 plus goal seasons and he's 100% a success. But I think even right now, just I I, I think he's a success because uh, no one expected him to do well, do so well, and he's so uh, I'd call him a success. 
All right, thank, thank you. Um, we'll now move on to Marcus Rashford. Uh, he was another uh, breakout player in Louis van Gaal's final season. He scored a double in his European debut and then a double against Arsenal in his Premier League debut. He's, you know, been uh, an important player in uh, United squad. And while he didn't always play as a striker, he was still an excellent, excellent player who would be happy to play on the right and the left and even, you know, as a number 10. Um, despite his goal tally being uh, 27 Premier League goals in three and a half seasons, would you say that he's been a success at the club, Joe? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, I, I love the rise of Marcus Rashford. I, I even like the way in which he got into the team. You know, obviously, as like you've touched on there, we had a... He came into the team because of a, a major injury crisis and fair play to me, Van Harley was obviously willing to take a chance. I mean, that's what we're all about at Man United. And I think, you know, some of the criticism I hear sometimes, you know, that he doesn't, you know, he's, when he's had bad games or he, the criticism that he maybe doesn't score enough, I think it's so unfair because I think the the way in which he's he came onto the scene and the way in which he's done so well, he's almost now a victim of that because obviously we're judging him by different standards to the way in which we judge somebody else of his age, maybe, who hadn't quite had the breakthrough that he had. So I think he's been fantastic. I think he epitomises everything that we look for in a young United player. I think above, aside from all that, I should say, you know, it, it must be fantastic for other young players at the club like Greenwood now to see what Rashford has done and, and to see that it's possible because... Probably since 1992, when the likes of Beckham and Neville and, you know, the class of 92 came through, I think, it, for sometimes it must look, it, for those young players, it must think, they must think to themselves, well, just how am I going to get a game? Because it's not every season, you know, you are able to bring someone through for you, from your academy. So, I think the impact that it must have had on the other young players in the squad it, it is massive as well. And I think that that's another reason why he's been a success, because I think, he must be a massive role model to every other young player who's currently playing in our under-18s and under-23 squad. Thank you. Um, we'll move on to our final player, Romelu Lukaku. Bought in the summer of 2017 from Everton for a fee of £75 million. He has been a very, very crucial player for United the last two seasons. And although... He's missed chances and his ball control is awful. Aaron, he's scored important goals for United. And would you say he's been a success or would you say that what he's done so far has not nearly been as good as uh, good enough as what we were expecting? Yeah, no, all, all things considered, you cannot say that Lukaku has been a failure at United. I, don't think, I think most fans would agree. The amount of goals that he has scored in two seasons and the importance of some of them, uh, speak for itself. It's just it, unfortunate with the way th that things have turned out now. It seems like he is set himself on leaving, and um, the, Oli will gladly get rid of him. Which I think, if he is not committed to being at United, is probably the best the best thing. But over overall, in his United career, he has scored important goals, and I think um, when when we when we signed him from Everton, I thought he was going to be our striker for maybe the next. 10 years or something like that because he w we were getting a striker that we needed a big name proven Premier League goal scorer at the right time with Ibrahimovic being injured so I thought I really thought this whole journey, the Kaku journey at United was going to turn out differently but it is what it is and I think I think that he will leave by the looks of things from preseason but overall in his career as a United player I don't think it's an argument that he has he has been a success yeah Thank you. Um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week, but I will conclude that of the 24 players we've looked at, we've determined that 13 of them have been successes, 10 have been failures, and one is indeterminable. Thank you for watching, and thanks to Arion, Joe and Soros for joining me. Uh, tune in next week in which we will discuss our predictions for top six and the relegation candidates. If you have any questions or any topics you would like for us to cover, then please 
comment below on the video or on Twitter and Facebook posts. And if you enjoyed this, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter for all our content.